everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Border City Rock Talk. We get great news, great interviews, great interviewees with sometimes a comedic touch. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, oh, yeah. leave comments so I know uh, what you think about my guests. And if you feel free, you want to buy me a coffee, there's a link down below. Without that, and without further ado, I bring to you Rudy Sarzo. How are you doing, Rudy? Great. You mentioned coffee. I just had mine like a couple hours ago. I think I'm ready for my next cup. What's what's your favorite coffee? Um, I like black coffee generally, like with a good machine. Mm. Actually, the best coffee I, I actually had in my life was in Mexico City. I was at a, mm. at a restaurant, and they, they brought me the coffee, and it was black. I don't add anything. And you can see the oils. Oh. And it's because, like, an expensive coffee machine will get all that oil and flavor out of the beans. So my favorite coffee is just just black. You? Uh, it depends what, kind, what type of the day. I, I can tell you what I do not like. It's lukewarm coffee. It's either going to be iced oh. or steaming hot. Yeah. Well, see, that's that's with me. I don't like cold coffee, but I mean, I can understand why you'd like it cooler because while well, you're living in Cali, um, yeah. what was it going to say? I had a freaking damn it. Gosh. Oh, um, I went into Starbucks the other day. You have been to Starbucks? Mm. You got to try <laughs> we, their. You got to try their. Call, yeah, we call it the American Embassy because it's everywhere you go in the world. <laughs> that's that's right. Starbucks. Yeah, they have them here in Canada. Um, order the Frappalapa. <laughs> Rapalapa. You know what? It's regional. A no, lot I just, of stuff I just, I just made that up. Yeah. Oh, Frappalapa. See, like I said, it's regional. So it's only sold in your head. That's a good one. <laughs> I like that. I like that, Rudy. Um, speaking of uh, you, Rudy, um, you've been dear to my heart uh, as a musician for years. I named my first um, newborn cat, Rudy. Oh. I really did, what though. Cat? What it's is a, it? What, what breed? Um, I don't know if, 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 if color is a breed, but it's a black cat. <laughs> That's it. Okay. And it's, and it's a she, it's Rudy with an I. Ah. So I did, I did name, uh, my cat after you. Oh, that's wonderful. We'll Absolutely. give Rudy a big hug and a kiss. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, okay. So you're, you're pretty busy. You're, you're nonstop. We obviously know you're not doing, uh, your, you know, the touring and stuff for the money. Obviously we know you've, uh, you, you've set yourself up. You've been in white snake. You play with Ozzy. Play riots. I mean, Dio. I mean, I don't even know if there's a band out there that you haven't participated in or lent your hands. Mm. Right now, you're uh, going to be doing a run up in Canada, mm. a few shows. Um, I think this Thursday, you start. Yes, yeah, starts Thursday, and then Friday and Saturday. Uh, Thursday is Calgary. Uh, Friday is outside of Edmonton. Think of the Book of Enoch in the Bible. Vancouver, the Book of Enoch. Yeah. Enoch, Alberta. Yes, Enoch. And, and are all yes. those are all three with warrant, or just two of them are? Two of them are. I uh, the the Vancouver might be just us or us and Slaughter. I'm not sure right now. Oh, actually, I'm going to have to correct you. Um, Slaughter. Everybody doesn't know this. I talked to Mark recently. It's actually pronounced slaughter. Slaughter. Laughter. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I told you this interview is going to be unique. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, uh, <laughs> sorry. I digress. <laughs> so I got a question to ask you. Um, I'd interviewed um, your former bandmate Carlos Cavazo uh, about a year and a half ago. Mm. One of my uh, highest uh, rated interviews. Everybody check it out because Carlos doesn't do many. Um, and I asked him. I said. With Rudy being back in the band, is why isn't has there not been any talk of you rejoining? Because uh, you know, I mean, Kevin was the showman. You and and Carlos were definitely a big part of um, uh, what people would think of Quiet Riot. And Frankie Benali obviously was a great person. But um, was there ever any talk of um, Carlos going into the band or anything? I'm just curious. To be honest with you, when I joined the band, the band was ex existed already. So I'm reason why I came back was to fulfill my friend and bandmate on and off for almost 50 years by the time he passed away. He passed away in 2020. We met in 1972. So that's 48 years of Frankie in my life. Mm -hmm. You know, he was the best man at my wedding. And we always, you know, I was I was the only musician or the only person outside of his wife and daughter that was actually at his deathbed 
And the day before, I, I uh, he requested that I come over to see him at his house the day before he died. So I was with him the day before he died. I was with him at his deathbed. And I came back to fulfill his wishes that I that I come back to the band. The band already existed. Yeah, he yeah. had picked Johnny Johnny Kelly as his successor on drums, uh, Jizzy Pearl to be the vocalist, and Alex Grossi, mm -hmm. picked by Kevin. Uh, twenty years by now, it's over twenty years. Over twenty years that Ke uh, that Alex has been in the band consistently. Yeah. So, I gotta respect that. Oh yeah. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, yeah, I was. I was not thinking of stepping on toes. It's just a lot of fans out there would just. I mean, we would pay top dollar to see um, Quiet Riot with Carlos and Rudy on the same stage again. I was just one of those things. Have you been asked that before? Or am I unique? Yeah, no, not really. Oh, good. I asked a question that wasn't cliche. Yeah. <laughs> um, speaking of Frankie, um, I didn't even realize that. So he he actually, at his deathbed, asked you to rejoin the band. Isn't that something that's great for you to do for the fans? Because I'm going to guess... Uh, management to probably confirm that since you rejoined the band, there's probably been a lot more reach um, to bring you guys into some venues. I think, anyways. Well, yeah, I mean, it, 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 it the numbers speak for for themselves, you know, and uh, so it's not an opinion; it's a fact. Hmm. Uh, I don't know. You know what? I go on stage with Choir Riot with a purpose for the first time. With any band, I never had the purpose of celebrating the legacy of a band that I've been a member of on and off since 1978. And, and I can give you the reasons why it's on and off as a sidebar, which I'm going to do now. Okay, I joined in 1978, 1979. The band breaks up because Randy goes... Leaves to join Ozzy. There's no choir riot. It's Dubro. Kevin puts his band Dubro. Then Randy dies. I lost my choir riot consciousness within the band because Tommy Aldridge and, and Ozzy, they've been around mm -hmm. for almost 20 years, each of them with Black Oak, Arkansas, with for Tommy and, and Black Sabbath for Ozzy. It was Randy and me who this is brand new. This is completely different. A few years ago, we were rejected playing locally in L.A., and now Randy has recorded these two magnificent classic metal records, Diary of a Madman and Blizzard of Oz. And now he's gone. So that took away, stripped completely my joy of making music. Then I get a phone call with Kevin. He's got his band Dubro in the studio. That's a possible record deal. Because the producer of that, of what became the Mental Health Record, is looking for a singer that can sing, come on, feel the noise. That's all, all he wanted. I don't care what else you put on the record, as long as come on, feel the noise is part of the record. And so I went, I went down to record Thunderbird, who I used to play that song with Kevin in the band Dubro, And I lived with Kevin up until the day that I joined Ozzy. So that was, that was my... My my family. I'm in the room again, made, recording with a family member of my, of, of of my consciousness, my choir riot consciousness, and then there's Frankie playing drums. He had just been playing with Dubro, and and my history with him went back to 1972, playing with him since then. And finally, ten years later, we're in the studio, recording. Carlos, I just I I had never met him before, so. But, you know, he was part of the session. You know, he played and he, he did a great job. So I went in there, recorded uh, Thunderbird, and we cut it really quickly because I used to play that song in Dubrow, where you hear me play on the records, where I play on stage in Dubrow. And then they say, well, you know, we have a few hours left in the session. How would, do you remember Slick by Cadillac, which is the only song that made it from the Randy Rose era to the Mental Health record. Kevin Dubrow wrote that. And then a couple of uh, Dubro songs, uh, Love's a Bitch, and Let's Get Crazy. So by the time that I left that session, 
I had recorded four out four songs. I was still a member of Ozzy, but I recorded four songs and just the the joy of making music with my with my my family, musical family, just you know, that I had deep roots. See, it's different when when I joined Ozzy, it was Ozzy was already Ozzy. I'm talking about meeting, I'm playing with with Frankie and Kevin, who we grew up musically together all those years, you know, all those experiences we had. And so I recorded, so I went to New York, recorded Speak of the Devil, and I went back to LA and made the toughest decision I've ever made, which was, you know, to leave Ozzy. They took great care of me, Ozzy mm -hmm. and Sharon. They were fantastic. But I needed to get the joy of making music back in my life. So I joined the Complete Unknown, finished up the tracks, you know, Come On, Feel the Noise, and a few more that were part of the record. I, I played on the whole record as credited in, on the vinyl in the back, mm -hmm. except for two songs, Don't Want to Let You Go and and Mental Health. Those those are actually songs that Carlos brought to the band. Oh, okay. And uh, Mental Health was originally called No More Booze. The, it, the, that's the song he did, Carlos did in his band Snow. It was titled No More Booze. And then Kevin rewrote the lyrics and made him into metal health. And um, so I came back. And now th that is what I celebrate every night on stage. Every, when I leave my house, I have a purpose. I'm going, I'm going on the road to celebrate the legacy of Choir Riot and the memory of Frankie Benelli, Kevin DeBro, and Randy Rhodes. That's amazing. Um, before I forget, because I've got a really bad memory. <laughs> I shouldn't. Um, Deathbed Confessions, interestingly enough, behind me, can you see that uh, painting I superimposed there? I see Venus de Milo. Yeah, well, it's actually the Spinal Tap album, Intravenous de Milo. Remember that? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, because I can only see, v uh, you know, it's just very small. Yeah. And Venus de Milo is... There's not many statues with the uh, amputee, you know, so it's it's pretty easy to tell. And this is a one with an amputee with intravenous running from it. So yeah, speaking yeah, of but, Spinal Tap, um, are yeah. you um, getting? What are your thoughts on the new uh, the new movie coming out? I think it's next month. I haven't seen it yet, so I have no thoughts about it. Yeah, I I, I love the first one. Me too. As a matter of fact, I'm one of those guys who would sit in the bus, watch the movie. And look around the front lounge and go, does anybody realize that we're actually living this that's on the screen? Yeah, I've watched it probably 500 times. It's like a cult yeah. movie for me. And so who was I talking to recently? I think it was Howie Simon. You might know Howie from um, the LA yeah. area. So, and, yeah. and he said he uh, he had mixed emotions about you know bringing back a classic, right? Because it's, it's uh, lots of times the second one a bomb. And then mm -hmm. you're left with kind of a mixed emotion. So, but I think, you know what, with all three of those guys and Rob Reiner, it's going to be great. So I can't wait for oh, it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then and people that might not be aware, the reason I brought this up is because the premise to the new movie is, uh, I guess, um, who was the manager? What was the manager's name? Um, Ian. 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 Yeah. Ian had a deathbed last will and testament that he wanted them to play or as a contractual that they had to play one final show so that's the premise so everybody check that out um so i found out really interesting uh rudy i was because I, I took myself off of facebook recently I, I find it's kind of a it's just not positive to me anymore so i went looking for the quiet riot website right just uh just to make sure i'm not missing anything and i came to this thing if you if people type in quiet riot.com it comes out to uh this political website that had like Lindsey Graham and I'm like, what the, so you guys, it's quite riot, the dot band.com, correct? Yes. Uh, we're quite riot band.com. Yeah. Yeah. So people check that out for, to get some merch and to find out when they're playing next. They've got three shows in Canada in February, which is one of our warmest seat. No, it's not warm up here. It's pretty chilly, but you've been up here a bunch of times in Canada. So, um, the set list, um, how many songs do you guys uh, usually play on your set list right now? It all depends. If we are the headliner, the closing band, uh, we play our full show, which is uh, 90, it's from 75 to 95 minutes, according to the venue. If, if it's a casino, uh, usually they want us out as soon as possible so people can go gamble. 
and lose money. If, <laughs> if, it's, if it's a regular, uh, you know, festival sometimes is where you happen to be. You know, if it's four or five bands, then, you know, like the first band plays 30 minutes and then the second one might play 40 and then they just keep adding time until they get to the, to the headlining. Uh, so it all depends. So it's, it's, it varies if we're, if we're the special guest, how long the set's going to be usually not less than an hour. Usually, usually. Uh, if we're the special guest, if we're the headliner, it will be 75 to 95 minutes. Okay, perfect. I don't want to forget something, so bear with me, uh, Rudy, as I find it. Um, oh, this is a good question here. Um, speaking of Randy Rhodes, and um, mm. just let me get to this stupid thing. I, I hate to do this to you. But, oh, actually, in the um, second ago, I saw bubbles coming up on the screen. Did you press something? Nope. I'm I'm. I'm, I'm I'm sitting here, bubbles. Well, somebody's a fan because they uh they've hacked our our line here and they sent bubbles up. I thought that was weird. Maybe uh, uh I I did see something coming out of Venus's butt, so that could have been <laughs> the bubbles coming out of her ass. Yeah. That's uh yeah, that's uh you you help you got you got my wife here laughing. Rudy, thank you, appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> okay, so where is this stupid thing? I mean, um. Okay, it. I guess I want to say thanks to Michael. He knows why. Um, I think his last name is Bullets. But anyways, let me get back to you. And sorry about that. Um, oh yeah. So, as you are always asked about Randy Rhodes and in interviews, I got to tell you, this won't be an interview any different. So, <laughs> um, describe Randy Rhodes's temper. You ever seen him pissed, like throwing a guitar around, punching somebody out, grabbing oh, a girl the hair? I mean, that pissed? No, never. I mean, everybody gets annoyed. I've seen him annoyed by something, uh, but not angry. Oh. That, that's a whole different different emotion. Uh, if you watch him play, I mean, if you, you can get his passion for playing music by just looking at photos. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to look at a video. You know, he will be passionate at sound check. <laughs> like, he wants it sound, yeah. Yeah, it, it's just like it, it's, he he couldn't he could not play any other way than putting passion in, into his playing. Yeah, he, he didn't really have any physical temper. Um, I'd interviewed Kelly and Kathy before, and they said mm -hmm. something that I don't know a lot of fans know that he used to like to collect trains, miniature trains. Yeah. Yeah, Z scale trains, and then there's something about right. touring. I know because I I bought him a few of those for his birthday in 1981. Oh December. wow! Did you got so, them yeah. on tour, or you got them locally, or something? No, we happened to be in LA. Okay, and I uh, in Los Angeles, and I I bought him there here. Yeah, right on. And there's another thing that uh, he liked, and you could probably confirm. I guess he liked to take pictures of castles. Well, you know, you're in England, so yeah. the, the the chances of 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 a getting photo bombed by a castle when you take a photo are pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's not a, that's not that interesting, but um, I'm sure um, people will be interested to know about the uh, trains that I interviewed before. So I won't keep you much longer. You've been very gracious with your time. Always, I love it. Um, what's the opposite of unsubscribe? Subscribe. Everybody do as uh, Rudy the Great says and subscribe to the channel for these great interviews. <laughs> um, should people go out and buy me a coffee? Uh, absolutely. All right. I want uh, to have you tried have you tried African coffee? Um, what do you want to hear, Rudy? <laughs> um, I no, I haven't. So what's yeah. the difference? Oh, I mean, it's still coffee, coffee beans, but yeah. I. Uh, somebody sent me from a uh, musical instrument company uh, this African coffee name. Uh, it's, it just says Cage, Cage in the uh, on on the uh, on the envelope. Yeah, and it... it has an it has an elephant, and it was just amazing, beautiful, tasteful. Cage? Something that I could cage, cage yeah. or cage, cage. It's, you know, it's 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 a weird font. Yeah, it's almost like a like tribal African font. Yeah. So it could be gauge, 
or cage, one of those two. But it has like a huge, beautiful elephant on the uh, on the container. Okay, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna give them some advertising. I'm gonna look out for. I'm gonna try to get that image and put it in here. And then yeah. I think that's about it. So everybody um, up in uh, Canada, a eh? make sure you check out and sell out those shows at the casinos. Um, oh, are you guys um, planning? Uh, I, I I know the answer here. I just assume, but um, I guess you guys are waiting for bookings to come in for over the summer U.S. tour, maybe or festivals. We have about fifty dates already booked. Oh, okay, I, I don't think they're on the website yet. Well, Lindsey Graham might not be following up. I think he's uh, he's falling asleep. He's not updating our our website. Wake up, Lindsey! <laughs> Is that a female or a male? I have no idea. <laughs> if it's a female, please wake up. And if it's a male, well, wake I, up, man! I, I, isn't that the website that the content that you went to when you went quietriot.com? No, no, this somebody... that was uh, well, I wouldn't find any um band tour dates on that one. That one's pretty lethal, I think. Uh, Ted Nugent, yeah. wrote it. no, I'm just joking, yeah, but it's I pretty political. Idea. But yeah, it's uh, if you, if you want to find yeah. uh the merch and everything, go to uh Facebook and uh Quiet Riot, and you can also go to Quiet Riot, I believe, dot band.com. I think that's what it is, but um, anyways, yeah. Yeah, we have a policy in Quiet Riot that has been instated uh, since Randy, I mean, the Randy Rhodes day. We never talk about religion, politics, who's going out with who. We just stick to music. I get it. Oh, yeah. Well, you, you vote, though, right? Sometimes. Okay, well, sometimes, we just talk politics. Yeah. No, no <laughs> because, you know, sometimes it's like, really? These are the choices? The le yeah, that the way I go is the lesser of two evils, but I mean, it gets worse than that. So I, 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 on more occasions than not, I have written in my own personal uh, choice, which is usually my dog. There you go. <laughs> What's your dog's name? Willow. If uh, she could run, if she she runs our house, and she could do such a great job running our country. I'm no, I've you. seen you pictures of your dog. What kind of dog is that? Those little fluffy little things. It's a very very spoiled Yorkie. <laughs> She's a Yorkie. Yeah. I was thinking about um your dog the other day. I was feeling kind of rough, rough. I'm just kidding. That's just my stupidity. Hey, thanks a lot, Rudy. I appreciate your time, man. Thank you so much. God bless you. Okay, bye-bye.